Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, we're out on the launch pad again today. Yeah, I uh, expect it for a while. We got a bunch of things we need to throw at Mars. Uh, this, however, is not part of our crewed mission. This is uh, our other one, the one that's paying for it, the one we have contracts for. Uh, this is our Phobos, uh, Deimos flyby slash landing mission, hopefully. <laughs> Always the, uh, I'm hopeful this is going to work because I really have no clue. <laughs> and uh, you guys voted with your likes in the comments, so this is the intrepid Proby McProbe face. I love you guys. <laughs> the, uh, the two were tied at the uh, last time I checked, which was about a day ago. Something along those lines. Wow. Uh, now that I've kind of learned to fly with them, these uh, HG3s are a good improvement over firing J2s to sea level, admittedly. But uh, then again, that's exactly what they were designed to be, uh, at least in theory. I don't really know if the engine was test fired, or I know it certainly didn't go to orbit. It was never actually used, if I remember. I wonder if they built one and test fired it, or if these are all just uh, on paper kind of numbers, because this seems pretty good. Well, I guess the E1 Advanced might be an, an on paper kind of thing. Anyway, uh, we're going to get uh, Intrepid Proby McProbe face all the way to orbit, and I will pick all of you up there. All right, well, we're going to call that an orbit. Um, I may have been watching the wrong number for a few seconds, and it ended up being 644 by 239, which is a terrible orbit, and I don't think we have an ignition on these. As a matter of fact, I know we don't have an ignition on these. I clicked on them, though. There we go. Yeah, ignition's remaining zero. So I wonder how much liquid hydrogen we've lost. Uh, out. Nope. Okay. That's cool. Anyway, <laughs> I guess we should plot for Mars. I'm, I'm certain our 5,000 meters per second will do it on these RL-10s, which have 10 ignitions, so we can kind of take them with us at least a little bit. The liquid hydrogen won't last very long. Those balloon tanks, 
there's our set as target so we'll just uh, ASAP create node and yeah, it's about what we expect it to be focus view well where's the yeah it's not gonna give me the ascending or descending node that's neat all right impact we'll take it uh, that is in two minutes no it's in 35 minutes the burn will take two minutes but that's assuming that we have these ridiculous h3s which we will not be using uh, we will be using our RL10s. But we are just going to go ahead and wait until node time. Or closer. No, no actually, because that's going to make it impossible to turn around. So we're going to turn on our RCS and stage. And pull ourselves free. Even if we are going to kind of tip it over. No big deal. Uh, those RL10s will just uh, walk right through the fairing. That's, that's not a problem. Good job. And that's increasing our node. So just for the time being, we're going to turn stability control off. We have 34 minutes. So we're just going to get ourselves a little closer. All right, uh, four minutes, 45 seconds away. That's about what I'm assuming uh, half this burn is going to be. We got basically eight minutes of fuel in the tank that'll take, you know, that will displace 5,000 meters per second. We have to go 4.4 kilometers per second, 4,416 meters per second to be exact. So, I don't know, I'm not doing any real math. I'm just kind of shooting off the top of my head. But it feels like a burn like this, if that takes eight minutes, a burn like this will probably take seven ish again not doing any real math in my head just trying to uh, all right we're gonna go ahead and stage in the RL 10 so bring up some info there turn stability assist back on uh, although this would be a really good time to go lock through these tanks. I don't know why it won't let me select that tank. I mean, it's highlighting. It's just acting like there's nothing there. Lock, lock. Okay, that does get rid of all of our uh, Delta V for this stage. We will unlock as necessary. I just don't want to be using the RCS from it. All right. Ullage in the engine. Very stable. Ignition. All right. Looks like we've got a good light on all four. And Proby McProbeface, the intrepid, is on his way to Mars. And well, for a change, it actually feels quite nice to have a mission going pretty well. You can see our core stage disappearing quickly in the background there. Uh, this is all sped up, so that it's actually supposed to be like a long takeaway shot, but um, I had already forgotten. Anyway, um, this RL10 stage is uh, very proven. I've used it uh, all the way back to the days of the RA9. I think this was actually a stage on the RA8 as well. But uh, yeah, this stage has been around for a while. It's the uh, HV upper stage because uh, before the J2s came along, this was the heaviest upper stage that we had, or at least the most Delta V available. But um. It feels really nice to have a mission going pretty well. And uh, so far, the mission's been fairly textbook to the point where I can almost just kind of sit back and just let this burn happen. And that does make me feel good about life in general. So there's our uh, camera transfer telling us that we are going to leave uh, Earth's SOI. And yeah, nothing really new to report on this. Uh, I'm assuming you've all watched the build episode. You know what's hiding under the fairing, and uh, I'm starting to wonder if being so ambitious as to fly by both of Mars's moons and land on one of them is uh, a bit too ambitious. Um, it's actually something I've never done before, 
which I guess is the whole point of the series, is me trying to learn how to play this game. So after the burn is complete, I went and checked to see what that bought us, and it does look like we have an encounter with Mars. Uh, it's not the greatest one, though. And so I am going to try to uh, fix some of these things. First, consulting with Mech Jeb. It gives me a node way out here that ruins absolutely everything. So now, no, we don't have an encounter. We need to do a pretty serious plane change maneuver. But, uh, yeah, this was about 25 minutes of me screwing with nodes until finally I'm able to get uh, what looks like a pretty good encounter. But uh, trying to adjust it to get on the plane with uh, either Phobos or Deimos is proving a mite bit difficult, and it won't give me ascending or descending nodes, which is becoming a more persistent problem and something that's actually very, very frustrating because just knowing where those points are in an orbit helps out a lot. But uh, I'm going to leave it uh, like this just for now to... Uh, I'll go out and make an adjustment later, but I will also set up Kerbal Alarm Clock here momentarily, I suppose. Uh, just having a look around. The other issue I am kind of having with this is that the, um, the tank right below or right above the AJ-10 on the actual, uh, I guess, orbiter section of Probemic Probe Face will not unlock. And that's uh, being kind of weird. Or really, it won't even let me right-click on it. So maybe I actually forgot to put fuel in it is my only uh, concern there. There's our probe core. And we have, we can't shut that one down. We're showing a power draw. Um, and this thing doesn't really have solar panels. So the longer we leave this RL-10 stage attached, it looks like the more battery we're going to lose out on. So we will have to ditch it eventually. But uh, I'm wondering how much of that liquid hydrogen is going to be not boiled off by the time we get to our node. But um, at this point, I'm kind of willing to chance it uh, as long as I can... Um, still decouple, but really like battery draw doesn't happen when you're it's not the active vessel, so as long as I just come back to it a little before you know, a day or so before the node and see if it's worth trying to fire up those RL-10s again or not, because this is a fairly significant maneuver that we're going to have to make, and it would be really nice to get that extra help, uh, I just don't think we're going to hmm well, it was going pretty well. Always something. But that's, uh, that's what makes it interesting. It's what keeps me on my toes. Yeah. <laughs> so, now I'm going to set up the Kerbal Alarm Clock before I forget to do anything else. And that is also going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, I do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. Well, we will be... Probably continuing our launches for our Project Iron Sands and getting a crew, eventually, uh, to the surface of Mars. Of course, the first step is getting them something habitable to do in orbit. So, until then, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you later.